Hello everybody, my name is KevGuy378 and welcome back to Depression Quest. Um, the last time we were here, um, we chose uh, to just go back to go back on the computer because it's hard to go to sleep. Get out of bed and head to your desk laying in bed with nothing but your thoughts to keep you company makes you feel like you're going insane. The harshness of the light coming from the screen makes you squint as you turn it on, despite how often you find yourself in this exact situation. There have been so many nights lately just like this. As you begin reading a news story, an online friend of yours IMs you. Attic. You're up again? You're up late again, I see. Yeah. Can't sleep. Again. Thinking too much again? Thinking? You guessed it. Unhappy face. Want to talk about it? You end up talking with Attic for quite some time about how you've been feeling. He's always been easy to talk to about personal matters and the added security of talking online helps. Being able to rethink what you say as you type it out and check it before you send it all the way out helps you gather your thoughts and you find it less intimidating in a way to type it all into a prompt than say it out loud. That is true because when you when when before when I typed a lot, it, it was just easy to just get everything onto something and then just read it over to to make sure that I'm saying it right. You know, like I said before, that I sometimes have an issue with trying to express myself with the correct words to phrase it without hurting the person's feeling or making it seem awkward or just making them see it differently than I do. You know, it just kind of it really it's really hard. I don't want to be that guy who thinks they can diagnose something because I read a Wikipedia article, but it kind of sounds like you might have depression. You should talk to someone about that, like a doctor. You pause. Are you really that transparent? Or is it that you've gotten used to talking about your feelings at this point? Your insomnia makes you a little paranoid, but you shake it off. We can do some research and see if there's a good doctor near you. It's not like you're going back to sleep anytime soon anyway. Might as well do something while you're awake. Smiley face. One, this is just a lone night. I'm normally able to sleep and I don't have depression, but I thank you for your concern. Two, no, that's okay. Three, I actually have talked to someone about it. I have become worse. I have, <clears throat> I have, become depressed again and I'm seeing a therapist even though you you doubt anything she says could make you feel better wow that just got worse too oh okay I'm glad you're talking that I'm glad you're taking that step I've heard it it's not an easy one I know people kind of suck at understanding this sort of stuff sometimes but there's nothing wrong with having depression you wouldn't be ashamed to have bronchitis or something so there's no reason to be ashamed if it's your brain that's sick and stud you spend a, a few more minutes talking with Attic about your therapy and your feelings about it. He's incredibly supportive and you're happy to find that you have a confident... A confidant... I've never heard that saw that word before. Confidant? That understands your illness and is willing to lend an ear when you're having nights like this. A little while later, you fall back into bed, kin in tow, and find it easier to drift off to sleep. Even in therapy, you know you're still gonna have nights like these sometimes. It's good to know you have a friend who will help carry you through them. Yay! I... I am moderately, de moderately depressed now. That's good. And... It seems that... I believe my therapy with my counselor is doing well with the cognitive, cognitive behavioral therapy techniques. That's great. Yay! It's a chilly Thursday night and you've just gotten off work. This has felt like one of the longest days you've felt in recent memory. Even though nothing exceptional had happened, a ton of minor things kept going wrong and coworkers have had tried your patience throughout the day. You considered leaving work early, but the last thing you wanted to do was deal with your insufferable boss on top of everything else. You're lost in thought on the commute home and your feelings of frustration both of your life and the world around you build as you run into minor annoyances like someone bumping into you really hard as they walk by. By the time you get home, you're exhausted and remember that these feelings were ones you identified as a negative 
feedback loop with your therapist. These pent-up feelings aren't dying down and are eating at you. You open your front door and stare at your apartment and overwhelming feeling of exhaustion overcomes you and you feel like your energy levels are low enough that you'll likely settle into a single activity tonight. What do you do? Shake off your bad mood and do something fun for the rest of the evening. Reach out to someone close to you. Don't burden anyone with your problems. Distract yourself. Uh, mildly depressed? Okay, that's still good. Then get worse and good counselor. Awesome. I would reach out to me because from from the past in this in this uh, depression quest, um, it has shown that talking to people really helped helped you or me in this situation. I would reach out to someone close to me. Your head feels too noisy, and you need to trade it for some actual conversation. Your therapist did say that it was important to reach out to your support network, so you might as well give it a shot. Who do you call? Your coworker Sam, he's funny enough and could be a good distraction. Your mother, she unconditionally loves you even if she doesn't always understand you. Alex, she's your girlfriend. Malcolm, he's family and fun to talk to. Um, I don't know too much about my coworker Sam. My mother doesn't really understand me, so talking to her about this would just make kind of make things worse because the solution to her, uh, the solution for her is just not really appropriate to how I would feel. Like you know, the try harder and you know, work harder kind of things you know she has said in the previous dialogue. Um, Alex kind of understands, but not really. So talking with her could make things worse. But Malcolm uh, talked to him in the past before. He un- he kind of understands me, and he is my brother. So he, you know, and his family. So it would be best to talk to him about that. Remembering the conversation the two of you had when you were given the night guard, you recall that your brother had told you to call him if you ever needed to on days like this. The phone rings three times before his wife picks up, and she tells you he's away on business right now. You dial his cell phone and go straight to voicemail. Feeling defeated, you hang up and lay in bed, thoughts gnawing at you as you do. You feel selfish for trying to reach out to him while he's busy in the first place. He's always so busy, and he's an important person to so many people. You, on the other hand, are laying on your bed in a crappy apartment, feeling sorry for yourself. Your thoughts turn to how how if you were to just vanish, you feel like no one would notice for days, and when you did, there wouldn't be too many negative consequences for anyone. You're not in charge of anything important, you're distant from your friends, so who would even notice? Your thoughts are interrupted by your phone ringing next to your head. It's Malcolm. Hey, kiddo. I'm sorry I missed your call. I was in a tunnel on the way back to my hotel. How's it going? He enthusiastically greets you. Although you feel awkward about it, talk to your older brother about how you're feeling and what your condition is doing to you right now. The two of you talk on the phone for a good, very good long time, and he proves himself to be an excellent listener and very skilled at finding the perfect times to lighten the mood with a joke, without seeming like he's making fun of you or doesn't take your feelings seriously. He reminds you that you can call him any time that you need to let off some steam. You. S- You say your goodbyes and you find that even though you ended up in tears one or two times in explaining things, the whole conversation has been a lot to get you into a better headspace. That is really good to do that. And this, this paragraph, the second paragraph here about if you vanish and no one really cares about you. I've had that, I've had those thoughts before, but then it always comes back to how would my parents feel? How, if, if I were to just be missing or just be gone from their lives without, without you know, it's it just, it would hurt them so much. Because I have a lot of empathy. I can, I can feel that pain. I can understand the pain of losing your child. Well, I, I, I don't, I don't have a child, but if I did, I, I would understand. But I have a lot of empathy, so it's kind of putting myself in in their shoes um, a lot of the times, which I do a lot of uh, with with games like these. Um, 
in visual novels, I, I tend to put myself in every, the, the shoes of the main person in in horror game. But okay, back to the subject. Um, I went on a tangent. Sorry. Uh, is that you? When I become, when I think of all those things that you know, my parents love me. My and and just how much pain that without without me there. It, it's just it. It would it would destroy their lives. It would hurt them so much that it's a huge consequence to to just vanish. It, it's not worth it. It's not worth losing yourself. It's not worth disappearing. It's not worth believing that you are better off elsewhere. And. Because people that you don't you you when you when you're in depression you don't believe people care about you but in reality without the without depression and those consuming thoughts overwhelming thoughts you you are you are very cared for you are important to people in this world. Just remember that you are important, even if you feel you aren't. You are. You really are. So I have never attempted any sort of suicide. I've not. I've had thoughts of it because、um, I was a nursing student.、Uh, I I've read、um, you know in, in textbooks and stuff about how suicide is a lot of. It's one of the ways that just that that people, you know, get hurt、uh, in in hospital settings and、uh, where where that when they go into the emergency room and stuff like that, it's it, it hurts a lot because so it, with those thoughts in my mind, it really was very overwhelming at times because I don't want these intruding thoughts. They're intruding into my mind. I don't want them there, but they're just there. They they come in whenever they wanted to. When I was depressed, the whole a lot of times and just oh, it was overwhelming. But talking to people and and letting people know how you feel to your close friends, to therapists,、um, and just getting the help you need, you are able to see past. Those negative thoughts, those overwhelming thoughts that you aren't important, those those horrible thoughts, to a better place that you can you can finally see it that you are a better person, that you are a good person, you're someone important to someone in this life. So if you are in that situation, please contact someone, please talk to someone. I. I can't really say that enough, but but if you are ever in need of help, please find help. <sighs> I'm still moderately depressed, and I am with a good counselor. It is an early, nondescript Wednesday afternoon. The type of afternoon that would completely fade from memory unless one made an active effort to preserve it. As has become routine on Wednesdays, you are sitting on the couch in Dr. Melville's office. To your mild surprise, she begins the session by breaking her characteristic therapist silence and begins speaking up right away. I wanted to start by saying I think it's great that you decide to come see me. It's an incredibly important first step. She begins. I wanted to take some time today to talk to you about the possibility of supplementing or substituting your treatment with medication. The mention of medication makes your ears perk up and you feel your heart rate increasing. She continues. Many people find adding a pharma pharmacological element to their treatment to be very helpful, and some even prefer to take drugs, completely eliminating their need to visit a therapist at all. Providing you rely on your support network and are still reaching out to people, I prefer it if we kept talking. Should you choose to start medication, 
so that I can monitor your progress and adjust as needed. But the choice is ultimately yours. I just wanted to run the option by you to, ga to gauge what your thoughts on that matter might be. Dr. Melba has just given you a lot to think about. What do you do? If you, if you had the opportunity to have a therapist and the, or a psychiatrist in, in this matter, because uh, some therapists aren't able to give medication, but, uh, but if you, if yeah, but anyways, if you're in this kind of situation and you're um, asked um, if you would, if you wanted to take medication, if you do choose medica uh, to take medication, I would advise it. Um, I would advise you that you continue to see your therapist don't don't just stop um don't just stop it all don't just just take don't just take medication because just by taking medication your thoughts are still there you are still uh thinking all those thoughts without having a way to express yourself to really to really help get the motions it, it's just like it's pretty much like doing a math, doing a multiplication uh, homework without knowing multiplication. Because you're given something, but then you don't know how to really go about to improve on it. Um, so um, it would be best uh, with my advice, um, the advice to just do continued therapy if you decide to take medication. Um, accept a prescription as a way to augment your therapy. Tell her you'd like to try drugs instead of therapy. These weekly sessions have always made you more than a little uncomfortable. The thought of messing with your brain chemicals makes you uneasy. you stick with the therapy. This whole therapy thing has always overwhelmed you, and this is the final straw. You're done with both. I am going to accept the prescription as a way to augment your therapy. Augment my therapy. And, uh... I know I talked a lot um, in this video, but I, I really want to express my views of of how of what is what I believe is good um, when when you do need help. Um, I mean, don't don't just take my advice for it. Uh, just it, it's just it's very hard sometimes for people to really come out and just. You know, tell tell people how what they are feeling. If they have depression, if they have all this these issues, it's really hard at times. But I I really hope that I can reach out to some people if they watch these videos that I'm able to to really get through them, get through to them, get through to you guys that are watching it. That that it it is important um, to to just seek help um, through someone that that you know and by watching these videos it, it's not like I haven't had depression before I have which is why I can I can understand what this is like but everyone thank you for watching this video um, if you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe to me it would help me a lot I would appreciate it but more importantly please share this video to people so they can so that people can be aware of what depression is like and that there is someone who who understands it who understands depression because I have had depression before so that I can relate so that I can relate to the people that are watching this so everyone thank you for watching again and I will see you guys in the next video goodbye